minister to us. Father, I want to hear you talk. Touch my lips. Ah, so Let me speak as an oracle. Lord, help us to see what we are doing wrong. Help us to see what we need to change in the name of Jesus. And help us to see what is required of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Say Amen. Amen. I can't hear you say loud. Amen. Again, Amen. Of the word of God. Those are people who see results. Part number three today. Bible reasons why it is God's will to heal all men. How many men? All men. Bible reasons why it is God's will to heal all men. No one should convince you otherwise. Healing should be yours to take all the time. I say all the time. I say all the time. Luke 5, verses 12 to 13 is our focus. Luke 5. Remember, I've told you I'm teaching for three months. I want you to be grounded in the will of God concerning healing. That must become the issue of the past. That you can doubt that God can heal you. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Luke 5, 12 and 13. The Bible says this. And it came to pass when he, Jesus, was in a certain city. Behold, a man full of lepros, who seen Jesus fell on his feet, on his face. And besought him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. Hallelujah. So the man is asking Jesus, Lord, if you are willing, that's in our language today. KJV says, if thou, if thou, and if thou will. That means if you are willing, you can make me clean. Hallelujah. So the man is aware that God, Jesus, can heal. But is not aware. He can heal him. Hallelujah. So he's asking him to say, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me. And today, this is the question of many people today. God, I know you can heal me if it is your will. What is the response that Jesus gave? The response he gave is the same response he's going to give you today. Hallelujah. Because whatever he says to God, he says to God, to you, hallelujah. And he can never change. He does not change. And it's not a respecter of man. Hallelujah. If Jesus does not tell you the same way he told this man, then Jesus has changed. You can stand on his face and say, Jesus, if you are not telling me the same way you told this man, you have changed. Because it's the same yesterday, it's the same today, it's the same forever. Hallelujah. So whatever he told What is the response that he look at how eager the Lord is ready? Even before the man finishes, Jesus is already stretching his arm. That's how eager, that is how willing he is to heal. Hallelujah. I don't care what is your problem. My God and my Lord Jesus is ready to heal you. Hallelujah. And right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and he put forth his hand and touched him. Hallelujah. Saying, So again, I, will. I will be you clean, and immediately the leprosy departed from him. So Jesus is saying the same thing to you. I will. I said, I will. So you must, you must, you must as well go home rejoicing. Because Jesus has said, I will. Hallelujah. And begin to expect the healing in the body. Begin to expect the healing in the body. Hallelujah. Because I will. <laughs> you will never find in the Bible where Jesus said, I want. Every time people came to be healed, no one was told by Jesus, I want. Hallelujah. Now, let me show you again. If you look 
at the story of the centurion, the story of the story of the centurion in Matthew chapter 8, you can see the same repetition of Jesus saying, Matthew 8, Matthew 8, verses number 5 to 7, just number 7. Matthew 8, 5 to 7. And when Jesus was entered to Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. This is a soldier, a dangerous soldier who had hundred soldiers under him, beseeching Jesus and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the past, grievously tormented. And Jesus said, him, Jesus said unto him, I will. Can you see the same repetition? I will come and heal him. Hallelujah. So he's telling you the same way. I will. I will. I will. I will. Hallelujah. So you can see already he's saying the same thing. I will. I will. Hallelujah. There's no I want to find. Where Jesus said, I want. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Now, if you look back in Luke chapter 5, look at the response of Jesus that he gave to this man. The response that Jesus gave to this man. Look at this. First of all, he stretched his hand and touched him. Do you see that? He stretched his hand and touched him. We are not told that when he touched him, the leprous left. Mm -mm. He touched him, but nothing has happened yet. Are you seeing that? But when did something happen? Something happened when he spoke. <laughs> when he spoke, then something happened. So I wrote here today. I wrote here. I said this. Every faith action that is not escorted with words cannot release power. Every faith action that is not escorted with words cannot release power. The man was not healed when he was touched by Jesus. But when he touched and spoke, powerful. Hallelujah. So could it be that even you yourself, you believe you are healed, but can you make some sound of faith? Hallelujah. That can complete the power of God to be released. Can you call say, I call my body healed. I call my blood cleansed. Hallelujah. I call my bones strong. That's when the power of God is complete in the name of Jesus. When the man was touched, no healing took place. It was when power was released to the waves. Hallelujah. That's hallelujah. Every faith action is incomplete without waves released. When God tells you, go and do that business, don't just go into the business. You must escort the business with ways. You must say, I'm going to make it. You must say, the power of God is succeeding in this business. Hallelujah. The moment you escort your actions with your ways, power is released. But if you just take actions of faith without ways, there's no power. Hallelujah. So your mouth is the last stage in the accomplishment of the release of power. Your mouth is the last stage in the accomplishment of the release of power. You believe you are in what I'm saying? You must go say, I call my throat healed. If your throat was a problem, because you are healed, now you must complete the flow of power by making sounds of faith and declaration and confession and saying in the name of Jesus I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Hallelujah! As for making those sound, power will make complete your body. Hallelujah!
Aleluia. Mas aleluia. The woman of the issue of blood, she was not healed because she touched. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I saw it today. Jesus was in the place where multitude were thronging. Thronging means they were pushing him like this. Thronging to the place that was suffocating. But none of them was healed. So touching is not going to heal alone. The Bible says this woman, she said, she said, she said, others were just touching. They were just touching. But so touching, no healing. Touching, no power. What command power to flow is your ways of faith. Hallelujah. Your ways of faith. I pray for you that tonight, as you open your mouth, the power of God will flow in the name of Jesus. I said the power of God will flow in the name of Jesus. When she, she said, if I touch, I'll be healed. I am not love. So, the ways of our faith and the touch of our hand completed power. Hallelujah. But everybody who was touching, if you read Mark chapter 5, from 25, going down, the Bible says, Jesus People were thronging. Thronging is what? They are touching him like this everywhere. He's on the middle to suffocate him. But none among them was being healed. None among them was being healed. But until the woman from Sabbath says, if I touch, the amplifier says, she has been she, she was saying daily. Amplifier says, she has been saying in her heart, if I touch, I'll be healed. She said it many times. Amplifier will to us. And the day she reached, the words had already released the power. The touch was the conduction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What are you saying? Hallelujah. Okay. So, when you go to lay hand on the sick, don't just lay hand on the sick. Ah, release the complete of power. When I lay hand on I say, in the name of Jesus, then I say, If I just lay a hand, there will be no power. There will be no power. There will be no power. No power is there. But don't flow. What trigger power to flow is your mouth. Say my mouth. My mouth. Say that my mouth. my mouth. That's why you've got to use your mouth to the use of your betterment, to the use of the release of power. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Mm. Mm. Let's make some noise here. I want to say in the name of Jesus. Say loud in the name of Jesus. I call my body healed. Say in the name of Jesus. I call my heart strong. Say in the name of Jesus. I call my stomach clear. Ah, that's how you release power. Hallelujah. Out of the scriptures. 
So I'm going to reason with you. Reason number one, we looked at it. So I said, why it is God's will for all men to be healed? Reason number one, we said, because God's weight is what? Medicine. If God's weight is for all men, then healing is for all men. Because His weight is medicine. Hallelujah. And if you are going to take enough of God's ways long enough, the word of God will heal you of anything. If you are going to take enough of God's weight long enough, long enough, the word of God will heal you. So you cannot say God cannot heal all men because the Bible of this world God is for all men. And if the word of God is for all men, then healing is for all men. Hallelujah. Because the word of God is medicine. Thank you, Jesus. And I gave you Proverbs chapter 4. You remember? 20 to 22. I'm just revising. My son attend to my words. Proverbs 2 4. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. Incline me here to my saying. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And medicine. Or health and healing to all their flesh. Hallelujah. What can heal your leg? The word of God. What can heal your nose? What can heal your nose? What can heal your throat? The Bible says it is medicine to all. A L L. So you can't argue. All your flesh from the top of your hair to the bottom of your toes. I declare the word of God will heal you in the name of Jesus. I said the word of God will heal you in the name of Jesus. And right now, tonight, you've come to take medicine. So you are taking medicine right now. Say, I'm taking medicine. Become in your body, hallelujah. Be 
because the life in your body is coming from you, the spirit. Amen. So if there is so much life in your body, it can come out of the spirit and enter your blood and enter your bones and enter your skin and cure you and heal you. Hallelujah. So much life in your spirit. So much life in your body. Amen. I declare, may you strengthen your spirit in the name of Jesus.
In the Greek it says, mighty good. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's why James 1, 17, James 1. And right now, I want you to begin to react in your heart. Any disease in your body, begin to react and hate it and command it that you cannot place in my body. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And build your sickness and tell out the body. Hallelujah. Because in the original creation, there was no disease. There was no sickness. You saw it. It was good, 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 very good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. That is my answer. That is my answer. That is my answer. I have found that the will of God. Hallelujah. Oh, James 1.17 says this. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Hallelujah. In whom there is no valuableness, neither penny or shadow of penny. So if it's good, it's God. If it's bad, it's not God. Now I'm going to make a statement. Please write it down. Just drop my story. One of the best things, one of the best things you can ever learn in this world is knowing what to receive and what to resist. One of the greatest things you can ever learn in this world is knowing what to receive. You see your child is full of fever and you're saying, we don't know my child is full of fever. You don't have to receive it. You lay a hand and say, get out of my child in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because we don't receive power. We don't receive evil. It's not of God. Hallelujah. People are waiting. When you know what to receive and what to resist, you matter what. Me, the moment a pain begins, anytime a pain is about to start, I say, no, 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 not here, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out, in Jesus' name. At the beginning of a small pain, I begin to resist. I don't receive it. I don't receive it. I say, I don't receive it. I say, I don't receive it. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Knowing what to receive, knowing what to resist. People are, are receiving poverty and they are happy. Resist it. How do you resist with your mouth? You say, no, no, no. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm the blessed man. I'm the blessed woman. I'm the blessed man. You say it, say it, say it until, until, until your mind is in place with that doubt of poverty. Hallelujah. I'm a blessed woman. Sometimes I say, what are you doing? You want to shut up. What was the problem? I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Does 
separate twins. One for him, one for him. No. What did Matthew 16 says? Your will be done. Where? In earth. As it is where? In heaven. Is healing in heaven. Is healing in heaven. What must God be able to Healing. Hallelujah. So, because of heaven and because of the world to come, there is no sickness there. Therefore, God wants to come and heal. It is 
was going to be Omer because of heaven and what to come. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five. Why is it God's will to heal all men? Number five. Because because sin S I A is not the will of God. Therefore, the product of sin cannot be the will of God. Because sin S I A is not the will of God. Therefore, the product of sin cannot be the will of God. Because sickness is a product of sin. Did you see that? Amen. So did you see that? Amen. So I want to I, I want to get to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5 is 12. Romans 5 12. I want to see. So the source of sickness is sin. The source of sickness is sin. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans 5 2, the Bible says this. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So, can you see? Sin brought death. Also, sin brought poverty. Also, sin brought sickness. Hallelujah. That is why. If sin is not the will of God, then sickness is not the will of God. God hates sin. So we also say God hates sickness. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to make a statement. Did you know that it pays to sin? It pays to sin. Okay, yes. Just write it and give it this. The pastor said, It pays to see. <laughs> We're in the school. Romans 6 23. <laughs> Romans 6 23. The Bible says this. For the wages of sin. What is wages? Payment. The pay of sin is what? So it pays to sin. Wave your hand. That's why you must not take light of sin. Because it can pay death in your life. I declare the name of Jesus. May God wipe away every sin around you. Hallelujah. It pays to sin. And it pays death. I'm in one death. I'm in one death. So, run out from sin. Lift your right hand. Say in the name of Jesus. I'm running away from sin. I don't want to die. So when I say it pays to sin, is it bad? Did you see the bad? The wages of sin is what? So you can never leave the best of God if you choose the path of sin. If you want the best of God, you need to run out from sin. Just have to. Pastor Stan, where are you at? Say in the name of Jesus. Remember, I've told you this church, every time I preach on anything, if I condemn you, I didn't preach right. But I preach right because it has to change. Hallelujah. It's like it pays to sin. To sin. It. So don't take light of sin. Sin can destroy your finances. Wait your hand. Sin can destroy your marriage. Wait your hand. Wait your hand. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You know there are some men who have come up to 50 women. <laughs> when they are when they are in Deba, there is someone. When they are in Soweto, there is someone. When they are in, in Eastern Cape, there is someone. Those men, they will never have money. 
So see can eat your money. Hallelujah. Thing of the being, the pillow is satan. But the lesson is from the kitchen. 
Read your version. Look at this. Psalms 41, verse 8. An evil disease. An evil what? So can you see? An evil disease, say they, cleaves first unto him. And now that he lies, he shall rise no more. So can you see? Sickness is the work of the devil. An evil disease. So number one, it's, a, it's the work of the devil. It's an evil thing. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 13 verse 16. Remember the woman that was bent over. Remember? Bent over like this. You've seen people like this before. Yes. You may think it's a disease. A lot of them spirit are attached to it. Amen. I'm telling you the truth. Doctors, doctors even identify that it's arthritis of the spine. The spine is bent over. But what was causing the spine to bend? Spirit, you are about to see it. A lot of people are like this. Don't think it's a lot of people. They are spirits. And if God can work with you and they can be responsive, responsive to the word of God, God can cast that thing out of them. Hallelujah. Amen. This one was bent over. Luke chapter 13. Look at this. Luke 13. Luke 13. I will start from verses number 11. And, okay, 10. And he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had the spirit of infirmity 18 years. How many years? How many years? And was bowed together and could not lift us up herself. Look at this. What made that? A spirit. Do you know a spirit can cause your man your nose to run? Just your nose running. And you think it's a lot of things. No, rebuke it. Say, get out of my nose in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. As a praise God. She could not bend over. And then Jesus prayed for her, healed her, and so on. Now, look at this verse 16. That's what I want to. Jesus said this. Ought not this woman be a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound. Who bound her? Who bound her? So many sickness you see are devilish. Satan is behind it. Satan has bound her. Lord, these 18 years. How many years? Who bound her? And Satan is going to leave you only when you react with understanding. When your reaction is with understanding, Satan leaves. Because God comes in. But if you're just reacting without understanding, he knows you don't know it. But when he knows you know it, he leaves. Like though you are not in the will of God. Hallelujah. So when you react from that understanding, he leaves. Bishop already had tuberculosis when he was 15. And he read the book of Matthew, book of Mark, and Luke and John. And he saw the He said, Jesus, if you are the one truly that heal these people, prove yourself. No more TV in me. That is actually just an understanding. Early in the morning, woke up. No more TV. Hallelujah. Because he find out, then he reacted from that understanding. Then Jesus spoke from it to him. And TV left him. People are tolerating. Just find out what God has said. Understand it and swallow it in your heart. And then react. They let the power of God flow. Hallelujah. You can even say, from today, what, it's not just doing from another. When your heart is full of the word now, say, mm -hmm. then you say, devil, no more. In the name of Jesus, from today, no more things using my body. I say, and you mean business, and it will meet from the heart. The next day, you follow this as because understanding has come alive, you react, Satan leaves you. Hallelujah. Amen. Last verse, Acts 10, verse 8. So, can you see that sickness is the work of the devil? I'm giving you, I'm giving you three witnesses Job, Psalms 41, 8, Job 2, 7, Luke 13, 16. Now, I'm giving you Acts 10, verse 8. How God anointed Jesus. 
Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Doing what? Doing what? Doing what? Now, the good he went to do is mentioned in the same place. Healing. That's a good. That's a good. So I can say that healing is good. So I can heal it is good. So he says he went doing good. Then he mentioned the good. Healing. They that were oppressed of the devil. So everyone Jesus healed who oppressed them. The Bible said it. We went about healing all they. So all the thousand and the thousand and the thousand Jesus healed who oppressed them. Who oppressed them? The Bible says the devil. Who were oppressed of the devil. So is sickness the word of God? Should you receive it? No. Should you tolerate it? No. But you know what? Just after this teaching, you will try it. <laughs> it's a low breaker. Amen. As I start. But I'm going to tell you that if you believe you know that you want to say I convinced. <laughs> so you can come in the morning and in the morning. And you, as you are coming from the shower, you are healed. Amen. Stand up on the feet. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So I've given you in total six reasons why it is God's will to heal all men. Number one, God's will is medicine. Amen. Number two, because of the strong spirit. Amen. Number three, in the original creation. Hallelujah. There are no sickness. Hallelujah. Number four, because of the source of, of, of sickness, it's not the will of God. Hallelujah. I'm talking number five, number six, it's the work of the devil. Are you seeing this? Amen. Just carry it off. Come on, put it here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. If a church can become established like this, no devil can play with you for your life. Because it's the will of God for me to be healed. Why? A strong spirit. If every Sunday you are here, every Wednesday you are here, every Friday you are here, you will have a strong spirit. Hallelujah. And then the devil will keep waiting. You want to see it. When are they going to be weak? You tell them I'm stronger. I'm stronger. Hallelujah. I'm stronger. I'm stronger. And you finish your will, the will of God for your life. And the devil, bye bye. Jesus. Ah, thank you. Just close your eyes. Want to bless the community. I am the Lord. You are here. Father, we bless these elements. Let your power rest on them. This is the body of Yeshua. Your 
drink it with dignity. Find out how 